Alright, quiet down. We're going to continue our series. Um, maybe this is 8.3, continue. Let's start on doing 8. I think I'll. All right, chillax. We're going to talk about a new kind of series called the P series. Um, this refers to a series. Chillax, come on, pay attention for a few more minutes. Um, so we're, this is called a P series because they usually use the notation P for the power. Um, basically it refers to a series of this form. And we know how these convert, how these behave. If P is greater than 1, right, so if your power here is greater than 1, it will converge. If the power is less than or equal to 1, it will diverge. By the way, um, it's easy to prove this using the previous test we spoke about. Using the integral test. You'll notice that this guy is a decreasing function. It's positive, it's continuous. And if, you int if your p is 1, the integral is ln of n, which if you plug in infinity, goes to infinity, so clearly that diverges. If your p is greater than 1, then the integral is going to be n to a negative power, and then that will mean, if you plug in infinity, it goes to zero, so that will converge. If your p is less than one, then your integral is going to be a positive power, in which case that will also diverge to infinity. So you can actually use the integral test to show that this is true. You can actually prove all these cases. And this is called a p series. Not much to talk about here. It's basically a series that looks like that is a p series. So for example, um, by the way, let me notice, let me note something. This here, the base, is your variable, right? It's your independent variable as far as this series is concerned. P is a constant, right? And this is pretty much... If these two rows were switched, what would we have? A geometric series, right? This is very important for you to remember this distinction. The base is the, the variable, the power is a constant, that gives you a p-series. If the base is a constant, the power was the n, that would be a geometric series, right? The th the things can look familiar here, you just have to know what is what and what the test will apply to which, right? So it's very important that you know where things are, right? You have to know the forms in this table, right? So we are on the P-series, which is the fourth row in that table I gave you guys. Anyway, so let's continue here. Um, an example, one over radical n, that you will define as a P-series. So if you see that on the test, right? Right? That's a p-series, because you can actually write this as 1 over n to the 1 half. So what can you tell me about this series? This 
diverges. And you can say something like by the P series test or something like that. That's it. Once you can write it as 1 over n to the p, and then you just look at the value of your p, once it's less than 1, this guy's going to diverge. It's greater than 1, it will converge. So that's pretty much it. There's hardly anything to talk about. Uh, as well as something like this. How could we write this to make it more? Cooperative. 1 over n to 11 over 10. 1 over n to the 11 over 10, and your conclusion is? This converges by the P series test. <coughs> Since in this case your P is 11 over 10, which is greater than 1. That's pretty much it. Could this work if, like, instead of just n, it was like 2n plus 1 or anything like that? It just has to be n by itself. It would have to be n by itself to be a p series. Um, the situation that you're talking about is the next kind of series, is where we'll use that. So, p series, I mean, <coughs> okay, Puneet, your grace period is up. Pass your paper up. The next kind of series deals with generalizing this. It's often, in many cases, you'll use the P-series in what I'm going to be telling you about next, although there are other series that can go with it. It's called a comparison test. Now, of course, you all remember Cal 2 very well. We had the comparison test with improper integrals. You sort of combine that test with the integral test, and you get the comparison test. It's basically looking at two series and comparing them. If we know that one is bigger than the other, we can sort of tell how they behave. So this is the describing two series. If an is less than or equal to bn, then this would mean that the series of a n is less than or equal to the series of b n. And here's what the test says. We can basically talk about the convergence of one with respect to the other, depending on what's going on. One. If it is known the series of b n converges, then the series for a n converges to if it is known the series for a n diverges then b n diverges This is the comparison test. Basically, it's just like you were doing improper integrals. If this guy stops at a number, then this guy will also have to stop at a number because he has to be less than it, right? Whereas if this guy goes off to infinity, this guy will have no choice but to also go off to infinity because he has to stay bigger than it. Yeah. So we have to find what it converges to the p series? In general, no. Okay. In general, it's very challenging. Um, so yeah, if you, if you encounter a p series, it will literally, you only tell me it converges or not. Like, to find what a PC is converges to in general can be tricky. Um, right? But this is the comparison test. Knowing when one series is bigger than the other, if the bigger one converges, the little one will converge. If the little one diverges, the bigger one will converge. Only these two relationships you can talk about. If the bigger one diverges, you can't say anything at all. Right? Or if the smaller one converges, you can't say anything at all. Right? It's in these two particular relationships, we can make a conclusion, right? So we can talk about convergence in the case that BN converges. We can talk about divergence in the case AN diverges and nothing else. So let's do an example.
here's an example. Look at this series. Uh, 3k over the radical of 2k to the fifth plus 2k plus 1. k goes from 0 to infinity. So this might be given to you on a, on a, on a test, a final. And I can ask you, does this convert or diverge? How do you attack it? You would, uh, is it something like um, we did the discrete term where you decrease the, um, the denominator? It's going to be a very similar thing. However, the first thing I check is the limit. Yeah. <laughs> it, oh, goes, yeah, yeah. it goes to zero, so yeah. that doesn't help. Yeah. Uh, would a and be on top? Or could it, could it be could it switch depending on the... It doesn't matter. You decide who's the A and who's the B. But just make sure that we're talking about their relationship in this yeah. order. Yeah? Because K is positive, you can remove the 2K and the 1K. Yeah, I can take, your, take this away and then what would I have? Note. The sum of 3k over the radical of 2k to the fifth plus 2k plus 1, if I compare that to this series, what's the relationship? This one is what? Bigger. It's definitely bigger, right? I made the denominator smaller by taking away a positive term from the denominator. Right? So this guy here is who I think of as my a n. This guy here is who I think of as my b n. Right? Which means, if I did this maneuver, the only thing I'm, I, I'd really be considering is, what can I say about the b n? This is the simpler guy to deal with. So what can I say about the b n? Say it converges, because you could simplify it to get rid of the k in the numerator, and then you have to series test. Right, I can simplify this to be 3, I can factor out the constant, 3 over radical 2. And this will be k over 5 halves, right? Which becomes what? 1 over 3 halves. 1 over k to the 3 halves. So this guy is a p-series, right? This guy converges by p-series test, which implies the original series. Converges by the comparison test. Right? So the comparison test allows us to go from a complicated situation to a simpler situation by manipulating things in such a way that we know the way the inequality turns and we can actually um, <coughs> make certain judgments about that. In this case, I can simplify this guy to a p-series. I know the p-series is the bigger one, therefore convergence here means convergence there. So I can, talk, I can tell that this converges by knowing that this converges. Um, it doesn't matter at all that. So in the original one, it was k is equal to 0 in the first one, and then that would give you a first term to be undefined. Uh, no, because there's a plus 1 in the denominator. No, I'm saying when you change it. Oh, you just like, I think it doesn't matter because oh. you're just doing a comparison. Yeah. So yeah. I can compare here. I can do it zero as a special case and then start the series from okay. one. And then, yeah. Right, because this is, it will be the same if my k actually started from one. Yeah. Um, so that's an example. So the p series, you saw the, tr the examples for the p series were insanely trivial. We're never going to test you directly on the p series. What we will test you is on the comparison series. And, all, and what happens commonly is here is where you'll obtain a P series that you're going to use to make a judgment about some other series. So usually you get the P series that, uh, Yeah, so the P series is usually something that you have to develop to tell you about some other series. Yeah. Uh, would you rather say the original series or set it equal to the original? Well, you can either say the original series or write that out. Okay. So, I so you can say the series... Right. If you label this as a n, you can write the series of a n, or you can just literally write the guy out again. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
this is a comparison test. We can talk about the convergence of one series by comparing it to another series if a certain inequality relationship holds. Um, that's nice. That makes our lives easier. So there are situations, though, in which we're not sure which direction the inequality will turn. And we don't have to worry about that because we have the limit comparison test, which is the next test. <laughs> This is called the limit comparison test. It's also a comparison test, but it has a bit more relaxed conditions as far as the inequality is concerned. test which is a straightforward test with the inequality. There's also the limit comparison test. It has limit in the name because you're going to actually have to take a limit. If you realize that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n equals a number that's greater than zero, then the series AN and the series BN they'll do the same thing they'll either both converge or both will diverge so essentially knowing about one is the same as knowing about the other right this is called the limit comparison test you take this limit if you get an answer that's greater than zero, you can make this conclusion, right? So if we know about one of the series, I can tell about the other one, provided that this condition holds. This is called the limit comparison test. Let's do an example of the limit comparison test. K plus one over K squared. <coughs> so I look at that, the first thing I'll realize is that limit goes to zero, can't use the test for divergence. Okay, so we use some other test. What other test could we use here? The k-term test is what I just mentioned. The limit is not. The limit is zero, so the k-term test won't do anything. Yeah. I could also use the integral test here, by the way. The integral of that is pretty easy. It's a substitution. Uh, but let's pretend we don't remember the integral test, or for whatever reason we didn't see that. Um, the test is, this term is sort of complicated, so I want to simplify it, right? Now I know we're going to infinity, so the normal reaction is to sort of change this into a series where you get rid of the smaller terms, right? Only the bigger guys are going to matter when you're going to infinity. So you're going to be tempted to do something like this, k over k squared, right? which gives you the series of 1 over k. Right? So now you look at that, and now here's the idea. If I know that this is true, then I could use a comparison test, right? I mean, if I know that this is true, I can't really say anything at all, actually, right? But now the question is, which one of these inequalities go here? You don't know, it's either one. You don't know, why don't you know? Because here I've made the denominator smaller, so this fraction should be bigger. But at the same time, I made the numerator smaller as well, so this fraction should be small, right? Taking this away makes the thing bigger. Taking that away makes the thing smaller. Which one wins out? You know what I mean? You're not sure because you made it bigger and smaller at the same time. 
you're kind of not sure which way this inequality should turn, right? So then you're like, forget the inequality altogether, right? Just like, don't worry about it. So this is where something like the limit comparison test comes in handy. It's when we don't know which way the inequality is going to turn, so we can't really make a comparison. So instead what we do is like, call this guy AN, call this guy BN, let's compare them with a limit. Limit as k goes to infinity, well, this is AK and BK, of AK over BK is going to be equal to the limit as k goes to infinity of AK. over bk, what's that limit? That's right, it's 1. Because we all remember our calc team. Now 1 is greater than 0, which means we can make some conclusions here. Since the series of bn, do I actually know about that series? 1 over k, series of 1 over k, diverges. How do I know it diverges? You can think of it as the p-series or the harmonic. So you can realize it's the harmonic series, or you can use the p-series test. Notice that your p is equal to 1. So it diverges, which means the series of an diverges by the limit comparison test. Right? Where AN was my original series. Or AK. I replaced it with K. So you sort of use the limit comparison test when you want to use a comparison test, but you're not sure which way the inequality turns. Right, so all hope is not lost in that case. You just take the limit of the ratios of the terms, and if you get a positive number, you're in business. You can actually make this conclusion. Right? Both series will do the same thing. So if this one diverge, I know that one diverges as well. If this one converge, I know that would converge as well. Because it means the ratio of their terms are very similar. They're just a constant factor of each other, which means that you can think of one series as a constant times the other series. So if one guy goes to infinity, that guy's a constant times infinity, and it will also go to infinity. This guy's a constant, that guy will be a constant times this constant, so on and so forth. You're looking at the ratios, you're just telling how they behave in relation to each other. So um, just to make sure, uh, the only reason we're going to be using this to, um, the limit comparison test is just when the situation is when we try to compare them, but we don't know mm -hmm. exactly how to, like it could be greater than or less than. Yeah, exactly. That's the state. And so as far as comparison tests go, I try to do the first one right. first. But then if I realize when I simplify it, I'm not sure which one is bigger. Because I did like opposing algebraic manipulations. Like something makes it bigger and then I did something else that makes it smaller. I'm not sure which one is will work out to have to have the greater effect. Then I use the limit comparison. Okay. And from top to what are you referring to that makes it equal to one? The degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator, they're the same. If I multiply this out, I'd get a k squared over a k squared. The limit goes to the ratio of the coefficients. If you simplify the original one to one over k plus one, would it be different? To one different over k plus one. Can you factor it? You could have done that. You could have factored this and think of it as one over k plus one, you and then you can. Do you still have to do the same test? Then no, you do a different test. Would that be a direct test? Yeah. This one's nice because you can do it several ways. You could do the integral test right off the bat. You could also realize that this is k plus one over k squared plus two k. Well over k plus 1 squared, right? Which is just 1 over k plus 1, which is harmonic. And I could even tell that that's harmonic by comparison. The denominator is smaller. No, I couldn't actually use comparison here. Why not? 
made the denominator smaller. Right. If I made the denominator smaller by doing that, yeah. this will be bigger than that. Mm -hmm. Right? And if this diverges, it tells me nothing about that. So I couldn't use the comparison test here even. What I would have done was do something like shift the index. Just start at 1 over k and start from 4. And that's harmonic. Right? So there are a bunch of ways to actually skin this cat. Whatever way you see first is the way you can use. If I saw that on a test, I would probably do the integral test. That's the one I would see right away, but it's up to you what you would have seen right away. Of course, if I had some like, put this on the test, I'd put something weird here, like a three, and then you couldn't do that. <laughs> and the integral test would get complicated. How would you do that? Just because. It's, it's too easy now. It's, it's easy enough for a class example. It's too easy for a test. It's easy enough. Who knew immediately that it was equal to 1? Raise your hand. Who knew that it was equal to 1? No what? One. What? This limit? Yeah, no one knew that. So it's not easy. No. Someone not said easy. it was. Absolutely. One person. That's hard. That's hard. <laughs> well, you should know that was 1. <laughs> I think I can finish the rest on Thursday. Um, our next test is the following Thursday, which means it will only be up to what we cover on Thursday. We'll do new material the following week, but I won't put that on the test. Yeah. Uh, you mean the final? Yeah, we have MATLAB final on Friday, right? Nah. We don't, we don't have class on next Friday. Wait, there's no class? I thought the last day of classes was the 10th. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> Is it next Friday that we have it? or? This yeah, week? that's what you're setting up class. No, it's said next Friday. Well, it's on it, yeah. Anyway, I wouldn't ask you anything hard. Um, plot surfaces, um, plot vector curves, evaluate integrals and partial derivatives. Just some basic things like that. This Friday or? I, I don't remember what I said right now. I said December 4th. Yeah. So that's this Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Is the homework due next Thursday? What? Is the homework due Thursday? Yes, all the homework that I assigned before the test is due on Thursday. So everything up to 8.3. We're done with eight point three. Yeah, this is this is the last thing in eight point three, the limit comparison. Test. So three homeworks to it. For eight point one, eight point two, and eight point three, those are due on Thursday. And they'll do eight point four.